A very good day to you from Snowy and myself. We're in the schooling ring today. We thought we'd get out in the open and uh, just uh, speak to you from God's creation. What a beautiful day. There's gentle clouds floating across the sky. There's a lovely breeze and we're looking forward to some good rain later on. I want to ask you, how is it with you today? I want to speak especially today to the housewife. Yes, it's all about you today. <laughs> We're not mentioning any mighty men today. It's about the housewife. Oh, I want to tell you, my mother was a housewife. What a wonderful woman. She's with Jesus now. I had the privilege of praying the sinner's prayer with her one day in the kitchen, sitting by the fire, started weeping. I said, Mom, why are you crying? She said, Laddie, she was a Scots lass. She said, it's not the same anymore. I said, why, Mom? See, I'd given my life to the Lord the week before. She could already feel the separation. Not that I was separated from her, but there was something different. Oh, I said, Mom, I've accepted Jesus. She says, aye, laddie, I can. And I said, what about you? Don't you want to do it as well, Mom? She said, aye, I do. Right there, I led my mom to the Lord. I'll never forget that day. She was a housewife. She belonged to the most royal profession in the whole world, a housewife. And you know what saddens my heart, folks? So often I see ladies who are at home looking after their children. And when people ask them, what is your profession? They kind of half apologize and say, well, I'm just, just a housewife. You need to stop doing that. It is one of the most, it is the most necessary profession there is today. And it's more needed today than it was before. If you, I, look, I, I looked up the Oxford Dictionary this morning when I was waiting for you. <laughs> and this is what the Oxford Dictionary defines a housewife to be. This is what it says. A housewife is a married woman whose main occupation is caring for her family and running the household. That is what a housewife does. And I'm sharing this message with you because I want to honor housewives. Now, I know there's many ladies watching this program who would like to be housewives. But because they're single parents or because they're widows or because they've fallen on hard times, they've had to go out and work and they've had to leave their little children in the care of other people. I'm not decrying you. I'm not speaking against you, madam. Please believe me. I also live in the real world. I understand. But I'm talking today about the optimum, the optimum profession, the way God created us to be, okay? And the way God cre created you and me to be was that a mother needs to look after her own children. That is ultimate, okay? The most blessed woman that has ever lived on earth, folks, the most blessed woman, wasn't Deborah the prophetess. It wasn't uh, Mother Teresa. It wasn't the Prime Minister of Great Britain, the Iron Lady, Maggie Thatcher, no. The mo it wasn't Cleopatra, the most blessed woman that has ever lived on the face of this earth was a housewife. That's right. And she lived in a town called Nazareth in Israel. And she was married to a carpenter. That's right. You know who she, I'm talking about. She was a young peasant girl who at the age of probably 14 or 15 was visited by the archangel Gabriel. I've been there. I've been to Nazareth. I've been to the cave where they believe that the archangel Gabriel visited her. And he said, you are the most blessed of all women because you are going to look after God. God is going to live inside of you for nine months. And then you're going to give birth to him. His name is Emmanuel, which means God with us. And then for 30 years, you are going to look after him. You're going to feed him every day. You're going to wash him. You're going to clean him. You're going to teach him. 
That's right, folks. You're going to love him when he hurts himself and falls down. You're going to be there when he is crucified. You're going to weep at that cross. You're not going to run away like the, the brave disciples. And I'm being very sarcastic and please forgive me, but it's the truth. You are going to be there. And you're going to be there on the resurrection Sunday. And when you die, you're going to receive a great reward from God. I'm talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. Folks, she is not divine. No. She is an ordinary person. She was the most pure of all women. And God chose to come to earth through her. But she's not supernatural. No, no. She's ordinary like you and me. But she was a housewife and she gave up her whole life, her career, her ambitions and everything else to look after this baby who is the Son of God, my best friend, a Jew by the name of Jesus Christ, who died for my sins, who's given me a new opportunity to live. Now, when the, when the archangel Gabriel had visited her, this is what she said in Luke chapter 1 and from verse 47. My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. Verse 49. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. The most blessed woman that's ever lived. Folks, I'm not talking about a film star. I'm not talking about a president of a country. I'm not talking about some genius that is a scientist. I'm talking about a housewife. I'm talking about a woman who probably couldn't read or write. She could cook meals. She could do the washing and the ironing. And she could look after babies. And wow, didn't she do a great job? <laughs> didn't she do a great job? Folks, I get emotional just telling you this. I want to say to all the housewives watching this program, when you walk down the street after this service, lift up your heads, push your shoulders back. And when people ask you, what is your profession? You tell them that I am a housewife and say it with reverence and with great joy and pride. There is nothing to be ashamed of in being a housewife. I want to tell you there's some girls now, maybe because of the status quo, they don't want to stay at home. They don't want to stay at home. They take that little baby that's not, that cannot even walk and they give that baby to somebody else because they want to go and make money and they want to be with their friends. That's wrong. And I know I'm going to get hammered for this, but I'm saying, I'm speaking the truth in love. If you want a baby, madam, bring up your own child, if it's at all possible. Don't have a baby only to give the baby away for somebody else to bring up. Bring up your own child, nurture your own child, pour your life into that child, and that child will grow up and will honor you when he or she is fully grown. I was just talking to the producer of this program and the cameraman just before this program. These are young men under the age of 35. And they tell me with sadness that they are so tired of hearing about the divorce rate in their circles. And these are Christian men. Because their parents were divorced. The one young guy told me something that made me want to cry. He said that I have a friend who has got eight grandparents. Eight. Four on his side and four on his wife's side. What they told me was it makes it so much easier to get divorced if you don't like what you're doing. Isn't that tragic? We need to set the bar, the believer. Not the world. No, 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 no. The, the believer. The world, the government, the political parties, the man in the street looks to the church when it comes to moral standards. Oh, yes, we don't look to the, to, the, to, the, to the government. The government looks to us. What kind of uh, example are we setting if we never want to be at home? 
if we never want to lay that uh, dining room table, I want to tell you there's too many Christian families that are not sitting down for at least one meal a day. When I was a young boy, it was three meals a day. It was breakfast, it was lunch, and it was supper. One meal a day. Why, Angus? Because we have to eat. It's not about eating. It's about fellowship. Now, you see, if there's no housewife, who's going to lay the table? Who's going to cook that home-grown, home-cooked meal? Who's going to do that? No, no, we employ a maid to do that. Folks, that's okay, but it's, it's not home. Why do the children not want to come back home, Mom? Because you're always working. And why are the kids getting advice and counsel from every Tom, Dick, and Harry all over the place that they don't come home? Because you're not there. I remember my, my, my father was an ordinary blacksmith. Now, when I say ordinary, I'm not being disrespectful. He was a working man. He was a tradesman. We had just enough money to live. We went to the local government school. We used to share our clothes, my brother and I. But I want to tell you one thing. Every time I came home from school, my mother was waiting for me. And if I'd fallen down at, at, at playing rugby and grazed my knees, my mother used to wash that wound and used to put a plaster on it. Not the maid. Not the house mother, not the care person, my, my, my own mother. And if, and if I was sick at night, my mother would sit up with me all night, folks. You know why? Because that was her calling. That was her desire. That was her concern. She knew everything that happened. She knew when I wasn't happy at school, my mother. Not somebody else, not a Christian counselor, not some advisor, my own mother. I want to suggest to you, mothers, don't underestimate your position in the home. The father might be the head of the home, but I want to tell you something now. The mother is the heart of the home. And if you look at any traditional people anywhere in the world, you'll find that the mother is the heart of the home. Yes, dad might be the breadwinner. He must be the breadwinner, in fact. And that's half of the problem why some mothers have to work because dad won't get off his rear end and go and get a job. So I'm not condemning working mothers, not at all. What I am doing is exhorting housewives. A housewife, I'll read it again so we can get it right from the Oxford, Oxford Dictionary. And uh, it just uh, makes me so happy that a secular dictionary can describe the function of a housewife. A housewife is a married woman whose main occupation, main occupation, is caring for her family and running the household. Some of us go out to work because we think we're going to make more money. And the maid is stealing you blind. That's right. And she's running your house. And you're too scared to tell her what to do because you know that you can't do it because you've forgotten how to do it. The housewife stays at home, Dad, and she makes sure that every penny is well spent. She makes sure that she's frugal. You know what frugal means? It doesn't mean mean. It means using the food that you've got to the best degree. She knows how to cook a good meal. She knows how to keep a clean house. She's there to teach her children how to take their clothes off from school and put on their play clothes. Folks, the most blessed woman that ever lived was a housewife. Nothing has changed under the sun. I don't care if we're in the computer age. It means absolutely nothing when it comes to marriage and relationships. A lot of young people come to me who are mixed up here. And I ask them some questions. And I find out that they used to come home every day and mom wasn't there. She was off in her own career. Dad was trying to put bread on the table and they had no one to go to. So they get into trouble. Start sniffing glue, start taking drugs, start sleeping with other kids because they're lonely. And then mom and dad have to pay for that as well. And it's a, it's a spiral that just keeps going downward. I want to tell you the housewife is worth her weight in gold. <laughs> My wife has always been a housewife. We have five children, we have nine grandchildren, we have 27 adopted children, and I have 176, one more last week, spiritual son who's looking to me as a mentor and a father figure. You can't, money can't buy that kind of thing. It comes from spending time, it's relationship. 
And I want to tell you, mothers, again, I salute you, housewives. I take my hat off and I salute you. It's not easy. Because you pick up all the flack at home. You put up with all the nonsense from the children. But you know something? They love mom. Every man that I've ever met, and I've met a few celebrities in my time, every single one, when I say, what do you owe it to? My mother. <laughs> I never hear them say my dad. My mother, she was always there for me. My mom was sitting on the edge of that rugby field when I was playing. Come on, son, you can do it. My mom was at the tennis courts when I was practicing. She was there with a nice ice cold Coke or whatever it is. My mom was there for me. My mom helped me with my homework. Not some professional tutor, my own mother. My mother was there. I want to say to you, housewives, I salute you. Don't change your profession unless you really have to. Just keep on doing what God told you to do. It is a wonderful thing. You know, my, we sat together last night as a family. I've got our whole family. I've got one daughter, unfortunately, that's in another city. She couldn't make it. But everybody else was there and the grandchildren. We sat at this long table, about 20 of us. And my wife was right next to me. And I tell you what, we paid her homage. And when I started to explain to the kids what mom had done over the years, I choked up and I couldn't speak anymore. I actually started to weep. You see, people look at this farm and they know the story. We came here from Zambia with a truck and trailer. I couldn't speak Zulu. We had enough money to put a deposit down on this farm. I built a mud house in three weeks. We still live in that house, by the way. But man, it's a beautiful home. You need to come and see it sometime. <laughs> and people say to me, wow, Angus, and you clear fell this bush with a long-handled felling axe. I didn't even have enough money to buy a chainsaw. That's the truth. And you plowed night and day and you planted a massive crop of maize with a little two-row planter. What amazing work. And I say, no, 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 no. You got it all wrong. The credit must go to that housewife, my wife, the mother of my five children. I don't know how she did it. We had no water when we arrived here. There's no telephones, no cell phones in those days. Jill would take our motor car with a 20-liter bucket and go to the neighbors to get drinking water. That's how we started. I don't know how she did it. She washed those kids for school. I'd come home from plowing all day and planting, and there'd be a hot meal there. I don't know how she did it. A bucket of hot water for me to wash in before we got the water system up and running. She never complained. She always looked smart. She looked pretty. The kids had done their homework. They were well-mannered. The credit goes to the housewife. So housewives, again, I want to salute you. You know, I've told this story before, but I need to tell you again. One of the greatest evangelists that has ever walked on the face of this earth was an Englishman. His name was John Wesley. After he died, they started the, the Methodist church. John Wesley was one of 18 children. 18! His father was a minister. He never mentions his father in his memoirs. Never mentions him. 18 children. His mother was his everything. He said, I have studied under Calvin. I have studied under Count Zizendorf in Europe. I have studied under the greatest theologians in the world. John Wesley, by the way, had an MA, a Master of Arts degree in theology. He went to Oxford University, I think. He said, but I owe all my learning all my education and all my spiritual maturity to only one person. That's right, a housewife, my mother. Her name was Susanna. And I've been to his house in London. And I've climbed up the steps to his bedroom. He, his house is like a four or five story house right next to the church. And right across the road is a graveyard. And who's buried in that graveyard? His mother. He could see her grave from his window. Isn't that amazing? He loved his mother. He honored his mother. You can speak to a man like Winston Churchill, regarded as probably one of the greatest orators that has ever lived. And he'll tell you all about his mother and his wife, who influenced his life more than anybody else. And we go on and on. You can speak about Madiba, regarded as probably the greatest statesman in the world. And he will tell you about his mother, who was illiterate, 
but she taught him everything he knew. Housewife, do not be ashamed or embarrassed about your profession. When somebody asks you again, what are you? You tell them, I am a housewife. My qualifications are, I am the mother of so many children and my husband is the head of my home. And your credentials will speak for themselves when those big men and women walk into your home and they come and give you a hug and I get emotional telling you this and put their arms around you and kiss you and say, Mom, we love you. I would give a million rand to have a cup of tea with my old mother, but I have to wait until I meet her in heaven. Just one last word as we close, because I'm going to pray for you now. Young people who are watching this program, and maybe some not so young, if you have a mother that's still alive, I want to challenge you to make a great fuss of her. Take some of that hard-earned money out of your pocket and spend it on her. If she happens to be in an old age home, go and visit her. Agnes, I can't. I'm overseas. Well, write her a letter again and tell her what she's meant to you. Because there's a shortage in the world today of housewives. And I really believe God wants to honor housewives just like he honored Mary, the mother of Jesus. God didn't have to be born through the womb of a woman. He's God. He could have supernaturally just appeared. In fact, Jesus did that the second time when he stood in amongst the disciples. He just arrived. He didn't knock on the door. He walked through the door because he's God. But he chose to be born through a woman, a housewife, her name, Mary. I want to pray for you. Father, I want to thank you for housewives. And I want to ask you to forgive us men and children for not honoring our mothers, for not honoring the occupation of a housewife. Lord, I pray that uh, many women watching this program, especially those who are feeling that they haven't achieved anything since they left school, will have a good look at themselves from today onwards, from a different point of view, from your point of view, and that they'll do their best to make their home a place where people can come, especially their children, and rest in the presence of God. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, there we have it. So, housewives, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for your selfless lifestyle. Thank you for preferring your husbands and your children to yourself. God has got a great reward for you in paradise. Until next time, God bless you. Goodbye. This could be We trust that you were blessed by today's program. To find out more about Family Time with Angus Bucken, Grassroots or upcoming events, please go to angusbucken.com. You can join our Facebook family and receive regular encouragements from Angus or you can keep updated on Twitter at www.twitter.com forward slash Angus Bucken.